And welcome back to E-Before I Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Decepticon Viper. It's a Legends class figure that's a repaint of Power Glide. Now, this Combiner Wars figure is unique because this is a, a blending of G.I. Joe and Transformers properties. He turns into a Cobra Rattler. How cool is that? Uh, aside from that, his face is also molded to look like Wild Weasel. So there's a whole bunch of G.I. Joe tie-in. Let's take a closer look, compare these two figures, and see what you're getting with Viper. So here's a close look at the jet, and it's just a straight-up repaint of Power Glide. There's no different in-plastic molding to be had here. So as you can see the two together, all the in-plastic molding on the wings, uh, in the tail section, in the nose cone. Actually, there is one bit of difference. You don't get the little uh, blaster gun thing on the Cobra Rattler there. It doesn't exist. So an odd retool. and It's kind of a weird thing that they wouldn't do that. Uh, but everything else is exactly the same, uh, obviously outside of the paint uh, and the plastic. Uh, flipping over to the underbelly. So you can see that, uh, again, there's real, no real difference there. Uh, the plastic molding is the same. Uh, still got a screw in the same spot. And again, that weapon is the only real difference outside of the head sculpt, which we'll get to in a moment. Looking at the detail here, though, it is very, very nice. It's a nice shade of purple. And that, it, my camera might look a bit more blue than it looks in hand. But you can see that uh, you've got the, the Z06 Deco, the uh, Cobra Air Squadron deal, uh, along with the Decepticon symbol in the middle. So just a real neat thing connecting this property to G.I. Joe. Uh, in the back, you've got some silver paint on the back of the jets. A little bit of the purple inside, which is a nice touch. No paint on the rear uh, as far as that little thruster is concerned, just the purple plastic. Just like Power Glide, I kind of wish they'd made that a different color because it just doesn't look right. Maybe just a coat of paint on the top would have been nice. You can see I had the same issue with Power Glide, although it was lighter plastic on Power Glide. This one's more of a gray, uh, but you know, is what it is. Side view, you can see uh, a hand right there, which is fine, like classic old school Power Glide mold. So that's pretty much what you get in his jet mode. Transformation is also identical, but what a neat figure this is. Let's go ahead and walk you through transformation in case you haven't seen it. The first thing you want to do is you want to tuck in the landing gear. Then you want to come around here and unpeg the arms. Come down to the legs and you can separate them if you want to. After you've separated the legs, you want to take this little flap, lift it up, then take the whole nose cone section. It's on a dual hinge joint, so you're just going to bring it straight down and snap it in place. Take the head. We'll get a nice face reveal here. Just want to turn that around until you get a face. Hello, Viper. I'm going to pull down the feet. One thing I should mention while I'm transforming this is that the joints are nice and tight. I think even tighter than Power Glide, so that's a good thing. Take these little back wing sections and fold them back. Rotate the wing, rinse and repeat on the other side. Take that tab, put it into that hole. That's what she said. Do the same thing, rinse and repeat. You have now almost have a complete figure. I'm gonna take this arm just open it up, nice stiff joints again. Do the same thing here, and at this point, you're ready to stand him up, pose him up. And well, I didn't do much posing, but here you have Viper along with Power Glide in the robot modes. Again, same molding, different head sculpt, and I like the head sculpt here. He sculpted to look like Wild Weasel, and if you're not familiar with Wild Weasel, do a quick Google search and uh, take a look, and you see. Maybe if the mouth doesn't quite do it for you, look at the glasses. Look at the goggles, and it's an exact match. Very, very nice deal right there. Uh, let's take a look at some other close details on Viper. Head sculpt looks great. Uh, no, no question about it. I like the way that looks, and it differs quite a bit from Power Glide. It's not just a simple repaint, but it's actually a retool of the plastic itself. So molding changes there. Uh, you have a, a black cap to it, which was on the nose of the plane as well. And here you have the little gun sticking out, which does look a bit silly in robot mode on Power Glide. I never really noticed that before, but yeah, it, it does. Uh, but minor thing. Uh, back to Viper. Again, the deco looks great. Uh, you've got the red and the purple, the eye goggles. 
uh, the Cobra insignia along with the Decepticon symbol in the middle. Purple all the way around. I love the weapon look. They're painted real nice, kind of gold in the bottom of the arms. Power Glide had the same molding, but it just was black. You know, no real paint there. Uh, but here you've got nice kind of gold painted inside of that, and it looks fantastic. Got plain on the waist. Power Glide had a little bit of paint there. Maybe he wanted to call attention to that part. Of his, uh, anyway, uh, but he had gray, dark gray plastic here, uh, purple. Everything else kind of comes along that you saw in jet mode. Overall, I think this is a neat figure. And as you saw standing next to Power Glide earlier, the two do look good together, and they could actually be on opposing shelves, Decepticon, Autobot, and they look, you wouldn't sit there and go, oh man, just another crappy repaint. They really did something special here, and I'm happy that they did. Articulation is exactly the same as Power Glide. You got a ball joint here in the arm, hinge on the elbow, no wrist articulation, no waist articulation. You do have a ball joint right there inside of the thigh, hinge on the knee. The feet are also on a hinge, so you can get a little bit of posability. Why is that red? All right, so if you want to give him a baboon mode, you've got baboon mode right there. So, oh, I know, because in weapon mode for Combiner Wars, that, okay, I'm not even going to show that to you because it looks crappy. Um, but as a standalone figure, I think this guy looks great. So G1 Power Glide approves of both of his uh, little brothers right here. If you find that you are sick of repaints, and you don't like them at all. You might still like this guy. Uh, if you absolutely feel like you just don't need another Power Glide mold, then don't, just skip it. But I think this is a neat figure. It ties into G.I. Joe perfectly in a unique way. You got really two different references between the, uh, between the Rattler itself and then Wild Weasel. Overall, I think this is a great use of a repaint. Fantastic remold in the face. Definitely, in my opinion, if you see this guy in retail, Pick him up. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Anyway, that's the end of this edition of E Before I Video Reviews. I'm the E Before I guy. Anyway, if you want to follow me and be a part of my channel, not just watch the channel, but be a part of the channel. I'm speaking ridiculous now. But anyway, you can follow me at various places. I'm at facebook.com slash E Before I, twitter.com at E Before I net. I'm also on, well, YouTube, in case you're watching this somewhere else. It's youtube.com slash e before I net. Spread the word. Let your friends know about me. I also have a Facebook group if you want to interact with me daily. Send me pictures through this group. Comment on things that you've purchased. I'll give you things that I've purchased. Blah, blah, blah. Not give you, but show you pictures. And all you need to do is hit subscribe or follow the link that I have down here. And if you go there, then you are a member. Okay, I'm done. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll see you back here again real soon.